What's up y'all? Keith Dykes here with WKD Construction and welcome to my channel. Well today's video we are back at the Melton Farm Project. We are going to jump to the inside and we're going we're gonna to set some tile. I'm not going to get into a step-by-step -step, uh, method how to install tile. I'm just going to kind of do a rough overview and then give you some tips and tricks that I use to ensure that I have a top quality installed tile. So when you get into tile choices, holy cow, <laughs> there is a plethora, a plethora of style, shapes, patterns, everything. It is very, it, it can be intimidating trying to pick out tile, just, just, just tile alone. Cause I mean, I mean, look, the choices we have now compared to 10, 15 years ago, or, e or even when I started setting tile, dude, it is, it is crazy. It, it can be intimidating. So, uh, Miss Susan actually hired a designer. Actually, it was my wife. She hired, she hired my wife to, she kind of give her some ideas what she wanted. So my wife would go and we'd pick out, she'd go out and pick out two or three different color schemes, tiles, whatever, you know, to go with the paint, to go with the tile. And, and try to coordinate everything. So she gave her two or three different options to be able to just say, hmm, yeah, I like that one. My wife, Emily, has a pretty dang good eye for picking out stuff. Uh, we've been, this, uh, the house we're building right now is our third house. She does excellent every single time. So Miss Susan was more than, more than happy to uh, kind of put that burden on somebody else. Uh, it, it, it made, it made her a little more, uh, it just, it just helped her out. It just didn't stress her out so much. But this house, it wasn't, you know, it's not huge. So we've got a couple, we've got a couple bathrooms. We got a laundry room that we tiled. We're going to do in the master, we're going to do a hexagon tile black in matte black. And then we're going to do a deco tile around the back side of the tub. The little small bath and the laundry room are just kind of just some general, I think they were 12 by 24 tiles, nothing, nothing crazy. I tiled the shower and the master bathroom as well, but I'm going to make that a separate video. That's pretty, pretty detailed. And, uh, I wanted you to see that, that process just, just alone. I'm going to be using a cultured marble shower tray. I'm not a fan of tile in the bottom of a shower just because it's the cleanliness of it. It's, it's hard to, it's even hard to keep your walls clean. If you got tile, much less water stain, you know, standing on top of your tile in the, in the shower tray part. So if, if my client, I give my client the option to do a poured marble base, if they don't want it, that's fine. I will tile a shower tray. No, no problems. But in just in my opinion, I don't care for tile in the bottom of the shower. We wrapped the shower walls in tile. Uh, I did some recessed niche, niches, niches. <laughs> we used the Curdy board, so all the Curdy products. We did have like a little knee wall. So we put glass on top of it and I wrapped the whole entire jam with quartz, quartz countertop. It's a very good product, holds up really well to the, the harsh environment of a shower. So stay tuned for that video. That is going to be a good one. I got my tile sitting here. I like to use my self-leveling clips. These are Raimondi brand. So it basically goes under the tile, put the tile down, you run this clip through it and it makes uh, the tiles flush, no lippage. It does really good. Let's see if you I've been using it for a long time and uh, it definitely increases the quality <laughs> of your work, uh, especially on these larger tiles too, doing half and half or brick patterns on these large ones. Yeah, it gets you some. They make, Calidad Tools make some, uh, which Tile Bro, I watch Tile Bro all the time. We talk a little bit on Instagram and uh, yeah. Check out Caldad Tools, they, they've got some too. I've just always stuck with the Ramondi because I can buy them local and that's actually the first, first leveling system that I, that I started using. 
was those. And then, uh, like I said, I can get them locally, so I just run down the store and buy some. Which Lowe's and stuff carries a bunch of crap now. But when I started using them, I, nobody used them. I was, I was like the first to use them in my area. So I just stuck with them. And on uh, floor, usually a lot of times it don't really matter. I usually go with a half inch notch, uh, maybe even five eighths. And then I back in my tiles. That way you can get a nice flow, especially on a concrete slab, because the floor is never super flat. Not like a wood floor. A wood floor is a lot, lot more uh, simple, a lot straighter. So concrete slab, there's a lot more hills and valleys, so a, a thicker, thicker grout. Uh, sorry, notch trowel will uh, help you out too. And this is what I mean when you back butter. I usually just kind of go right over the top of the ridges on the back of the tile. And now we've got a for sure, <laughs> for sure mud to mud contact with a big trowel notch and uh, a back butter. Let's see if I can get this on here. And then this is a good little tool that I use too. It is a suction cup. It's clean. If it's clean, but it helps set the tile, makes it easier. Set it on your laser. And before I set every tile, after or actually after after I set the tile, sorry, get the air out of there and take your trial. Kind of clean around the edge. I clean around the edge because it keeps your grout lines cleaner. Because I, um, when I get done, I don't, I don't want to be cleaning up grout. I, I learned the hard way. <laughs> so you keep, you keep that uh, wiped, that edge wiped, and it keeps it clean. And then it also, I think, it actually pushes the, the thin set up around the edge of the tile a little better, and uh, you don't have that potential area for. Uh, for a break, you know, if, if the tiles is uh, all got the air all out of it and uh, all the way around sealed all around the edge. So that's what I do. Make sure you're tight. You can hear it going tink, 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 tink. Where they're getting tight. Because they will break sometimes. Well, I got a wet saw and then I've got this. This is a score, score uh, snap tile saw. Montelite, dude, it, look, it works. <laughs> it works like a champ. Let me show you. So it's very handy, very quick, no mess. Just put it on there and go. Snapping, score and cut. So the next day after your tiles all dried and set, get the clips off, just break them. <laughs> just kick them. You can use a little rubber mallet, whatever. But that 
that's it. And then it leaves the little red base in the bottom and uh, leaves your, your uh, grout joint clean. So. All right, so this transition. Oh, let me get you here. I'm not using anything. I don't want to use a wood transition, anything to stick up. Since the engineered flooring is the same height as the tile, it's, it makes it look a lot cleaner. Uh, just to go ahead, in my opinion, just to go ahead and just leave about a sixteenth to an eighth inch gap in between your wood and your tile. And then we'll use uh, some big stretch caulking to kind of color match to the floor or the grout, either one. And uh, just kind of cover that joint and let it kind of move over the time. But it, it just looks better to me than having something raised up and you're going to catch your toe on it. And uh, yeah, let's just, let's just make it flush. All right, so we got our last piece and I'm going to have to tuck it up underneath the casing. Uh, with the clips, it can be, be a little uh, booger. But as long as you got a uh, suction cup, suction cup helps, I mean, a thousand percent. You can do a lot with suction cup instead of trying to hold on to the piece with your hand. So I'll show you. Beautiful, look at that. So she good, she good, she good, she good, she good, she good. <laughs> so clips, we're ready to let that set overnight. Come back, clean it up, make sure all the grout joints are clean. Break all the uh, clips off. And uh, do a little vacuum. And we'll be ready to grout. Check out, check it out. Check out the transition right there. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And that ain't cracked. That's the tile pattern. <laughs> check it out. I have, I need to uh, drill a round hole into this porcelain tile. Looks like I got my whole bit. But this does not have a center placement, so you kind of got to freehand it. So I'm gonna show you a way that I do it. I just take a scrap piece block of wood, cut it the same, or just a hair bigger. Now I've got a guide, you know, for my hole saw bit. And then two, to keep it wet, got a little piece of sponge, dip it in the water, put it inside of it. And as you go, you drill, it keeps the, uh, keeps the bit cool. The water basically, uh, <laughs> It's like a wet saw, wet hole saw. Works great, I'll show you. Just kind of center it where you need it to go. got a starting place you can remove your piece and go to town. Low RPMs don't 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 speed it up. Perfect hole. And if the, if it was a little rough, I got the baby comb by Caladad Tools. That thing works crazy so good. Dress it up, you're good to go. But just remember, low RPMs in water, and uh, don't don't push on it really hard. Let the let the let the hole saw do its work, 
and you'll have perfect cups every time. You won't break it. If you get it too hot, you spin it too fast, it's gonna get, the tile's gonna get hot and it's gonna break and you're gonna have too much pressure. So just let the hole saw do the work and uh, yep, repetitive cuts all the time. And of course, it does have to have a diamond, diamond tip bit because if not, uh, carbide, carbide will not last. Make sure it's diamond. I was afraid that this would not go on because it's got these offsets, but uh, I got my baby cone. We'll get at it. started on the hexagon tile in the master bathroom and uh, hexagon tile is a little different I've not laid a ton of it I have done a couple jobs uh, in the past since it's kind of got popular it is it is a little it is a little a little more uh, peculiar instead of just you know you're used to laying square all the time uh, but what I did was right here I found Kind of found the center of the doorway. I wanted my tile to kind of just break in half because I could make I could make four of these tiles work out perfectly underneath my jam. So I centered it, centered it in the in the room, lasered it, measured off, made sure I was straight, and uh, yeah, it lines up with the center of that really well. And then I came back in, set up my laser again. I set it right here because I can do a uh, it's got a, a 90 degree setting, so I set it on the line and found basically a square mark to this line. So now I've, I've got a, a basic, a benchmark basically. I have a benchmark now that I know is 90 degrees from this line. So once I start setting the tile, I will have something I can measure off of. And then I'll, prob I'll probably run it to nearly to that laser. Maybe, maybe not that far, maybe just two or three. Set the laser back up and line these points. And I'll set the laser to these points right here, square, running left to right, left to right of the room. All right, hexagon is not my fave tile. It is, it is definitely a lot harder than, than uh, regular square or rectangle tile. Uh, but this is my laser and I'm just setting it up, laying it to the point, each point I'm setting to that laser. And then of course that is square off of this line. But yeah, it, it's definitely slow go. I tried to do it without so many clips and it's just not, <laughs> it's not, uh, it's, it's hard to do because if you, you start putting it together, it, it, it moves a lot. So I'm trying to keep it on the line Got all my clips on there that way to keep everything flush and uh, just more stable. Because if you move this one, it may move that one. You know what I mean? Because it's it you don't have any squareness to it, so it's all kind of shimmy, shimmy, cocoa puff. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it looks good. It will look good when it gets done, but it is definitely not uh, my fave. All right, so I have an expansion cut joint in my slab right here. We saw a mark. We saw the mark, so in case you know we can have a control joint. But that is a weak point for our tile. Since we're right on the floor, it is very susceptible to breaking right on that joint if you know if both sides want to decide to move eventually down the road. So I took a little bit of the fiberglass tape and just put a tape over the top of that joint. Hopefully, hopefully that way each side can kind of move a little bit and then if it does decide to uh, break, the uh, tile will be bonded to the fiberglass tape and, and maybe float, float that uh, crack. 
because I've gone into places before you go into commercial buildings and stuff and if you see a crack on the tile it'll go all the way down that's because it's following whatever's in the <laughs> whatever control joint they got in there and lay tile directly over it but that's just something you kind of got to do so I'm trying to uh, use the fiber fiberglass tape to to uh, keep from it we stopped the tile last night right here and I ran out of my little clips and uh, what you like to do is before you leave while the mortar is still wet the thin set is still wet you go ahead and sneak them in there that way the next day you come back and start laying but uh, if you don't have uh, if you run out of clips like, like I did I couldn't do it I just cleaned up as best I could around the edges and then today We'll just take the multi-tool with a little diamond round bit right there. It takes a minute, but since the thin set's not super set up, you can kind of grind it and uh, sneak these in there. So I'll show you. I can just take it and put it under and if it doesn't go all the way under there it's kind of the bit is kind of short just take a pair of snips and I'll just take and cut off to about that much right there and it should get tied up against there now so now now we are ready to go so I've been cutting them for a long time. I do it quite often just because they're, they're kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. But uh, it does not hold it back. That's probably the strongest part of the clip anyway. You know, it's right next to the, the uh, vertical part. So as long as you keep quarter, three eighths of a, uh, a little uh, length under there to get on a tile, it's, I never had any issue with it. So for uh, shits and giggles, I'm just gonna put the regular blade on there and see how, see, see what it does. Day two on the hexagon, the devil tile. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's just a slow go because I mean, you get you start putting clips on one, it may you putting clips on this one, it may move that one. So it, it's just got a lot of movement in it. So it does take a little more time. But we got all our lined up here. We're all square. Everything worked great there. So now we'll just sneak sneak off and kind of finish these sections up. Probably Monday. I should have most of it Monday and I'm just going to leave that uh, right there against the uh, shive from the wall just because of the vanity. I'll put a couple pieces in the back just to kind of sit where the vanity will sit on the, on the floor but we're just going to leave that empty. How do you know if your tile is uh, stuck really well? You just do a little, a little tap test, a little, a little tap tap a -roo, if you will. <laughs> but you will definitely know. The difference between one since we laid these yesterday. I mean that's what it that's what it should sound like. It should sound like you're hitting the concrete. And you'll see I get over here. Ooh, but those those right there are not dry yet. But you can do that on a tile floor. Uh, 
you know, even if it's been set for four months or something, you can go around, ticky tack on it. And if you hear a hollow spot, it, it didn't take. The thin set did not bond to the floor, and uh, that will be a break. That that tile will break. So that's just a little test you can do. So you can do that on your tile floor after you lay it or after it gets set, uh, just to make sure you don't have any weak spots because if it's hollow like that after it the, the thin set has dried, it will break. It it it's not it won't, it's just if and when, just the per right person steps on it or you run a dolly moving furniture over, over it or something, it will break. So I'll go around usually every day after, I, after the day we come back, I'll kind of do a little tap tap test and make sure I don't have any dead spots. And uh, yeah, if, if I do, then I'll take care of it. But if you back butter, very about 99% of the time you are not gonna have, 99.9% .9 of the time you will not have an issue. So back butter, can't go wrong with the back butter. Duck butter. <laughs> All right, so Brent and Steve have uh, got the laundry room and the small bath grouted. Like I said, I will get something to, to caulk this gap either big stretch or uh, the color match grout caulking. So I don't know what I'm gonna use, but this is the grout we use. Permacolor Select, Laticrete. It's got a base and a little color pack. We've been using it for a couple years now and I, I really like it. The, con the color consistency is a lot better than uh, just getting the pre-mixed uh, grout bags. You can, you, it's, it's got a certain amount of water that you mix with it. You measure your water per color pack and a 12 and a half pound bag. And uh, you get a very consistent color for your grout versus uh, using just the standard uh, grout that you pre-mix you can get at the big box stores. It's high strength, fiber reinforced, and it resists cracking really well. Uh, so, like I said, that's what we've been using for the past few years, and, and then I really like it. So, just about to get all this whooped. Uh, I'm not going to use a transition into the carpet. The carpet they can actually just tuck up, you know, tuck around on itself, and it really does make a nice transition between carpet and uh, the tile. So I just made a nice clean cut. What I did is, I had this one set the other day. I had two and three eighths inches from here. Went over to that jam, measured two and three eighths, drew a line. I set all the tile right here dry, and then I drew a line and then cut it all at one time. That way you get a nice, nice consistent cut line instead of trying to measure each piece. Just put them all down, run a line, cut it to the line, and uh, you're good to go. Brent getting a little action. Right here, I'm cutting in the bottom row. Just use some shims on the bottom. Of course, space it 16th of an inch. But uh, yeah, I like to do that. I like to set set all my tile, like even in a shower. I'll do the floor, then I'll set my wall tile up, whatever I need to, the height that I need to, to be able to use a full tile. And uh, just cut it just a hair. I probably cut maybe 3 16 off each tile. I mean, you'll never know it. Uh, so it's, it's very close, but you can, you, can, you can fit this tile. Make sure you leave enough room where you can fit this tile to the contour of your floor. Because your floor is not gonna be just 100% dead nuts, but makes it work. It, 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 you'll have a better finished product in the end. Right, we're in the uh, master and Miss Susan, oh, I can't even see me. Miss Susan wanted to do, uh, incorporate some shiplap above the uh, kind of the tub area since we did the wraparound. Deco tile, the uh, designer uh, thought if we did the deco tile, we need something up above it instead of just having the tile cut off. So we're gonna shift lap, we're gonna shift lap above 
around these three sides and use this piece of trim right here to stop it. We'll run the trim up around the perimeter and then fill in the body with the uh, shift lap. And instead of butting your trim to the tile, it's kind of, it, it, I do this a lot. We did a little, a little rabbit joint. That way, once you put it over the top of it, it covers up that raw edge of your tile right there. And makes a nice clean transition between here and here. We can paint it and then I can run a small bead of uh, grout caulking up down through there and it'll make it nice and clean. And then the ship lap, of course, has a, a lap on it. It will lap over the top of the tile about a quarter inch. That way we've got a nice clean edge on top and then we'll just run it up and butt it into that piece of trim at the top. I'm not going to use a trim in the corners past on the pool house, like on the pool house I just mitered. Well actually we didn't miter, we was going to trim it and then uh, ended up the clients wanted to uh, kind of miter with a cleaner corner. So this one we are going to not use any trim in the corner but we're anticipating it so I'm going to do a little uh, I guess it'd be a little mortising, kind of a rabbit joint on each piece instead of mitering each piece instead of mitering and, and, and fitting the corner tight we're just going to square it and kind of cope it basically which is bas uh, it's just going to kind of <laughs> just kind of uh, put a little mortise in it and then that other side should butt and then create a nice clean uh, full wrap around corner to where you don't have to uh, fill it full of uh, big stretch caulking uh, so this is what we come up with. Just took that piece. Let me pull it out. It's pretty weird in there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just we just kind of notch that kind of rabbit joint or whatever you want to call it, and that way that uh, you don't have a hole here because if you just butted those square, you'd have a hole, and this that way you don't have to miter it and it'd be. Uh, critical with a miter so this will this is kind of like a coat so it'll, it'll give you a little more flexibility if you didn't do it it'd have a gap right there then you'd have to fill it full of caulk so all of our ship lap is finished you can see we overlapped it like I said we put a little rabbit joint in there cover up that groove now I'm fixing to go back and put a little bead of our uh, color match caulking. This is the Raven. This is the grout we used in the floor and then the grout, of course, in here. So I'm just going to put a small bead down through here in between the tile, the both tiles. I'll put around a bead around through there. Uh, hook the faucet up and set a freestanding tub. The ship lap turned out really good the way we kind of we kind of uh, did that blind cope or mortise or uh, I guess kind of a rabbit joint as well too. The way we put that hidden joint, we didn't have to go back in there and uh, caulk that so all that wood is hidden and as the guys put the uh, trim up or the ship lap up, they caulked each joint inside of that so you wouldn't have any cracks or if it did it, it would be caulked and, and be ready to go because you can't get any tool in there it's really or you can but you have to make something and it's really hard so but it turned out really good there's really not anything worse than you have a good tile installation and somebody comes back and can't caulk worth a damn and just jacks it all up so if you can tile you need to learn how to caulk uh, so I'm, I'm going to show you how to do uh, a, a good way to caulk. So, so let me cook here, you know what I'm saying? But I got this done. Nice and tight all up underneath there. The corners are a big thing to me. A lot of times you'll see that just rounded over. It drives me crazy. So. This is my tool of choice. It's just a little tile wedge. You can get in there, smooth it out, get that corner pretty tight, and uh, it looks way better. 
So I'll get over here and do this side. First of all, make sure you don't have a huge hole in the end of your tube. Tubes, look at that. Oh, I hate these. These are probably the worst. Laticrete, they're full of air. They keep caulking. Even after you pull the, this is the dripless and it just keeps dripping. Drives me nuts. All right, so you gotta beat in there. So this is is the tool that a uh, old blind painter showed me one time to use. It's a, a sponge. That's it. That's all I use. Just kind of wipe it down with your finger. Of course, get your bucket of water. It's a nice, clean, consistent line. And if you need to touch it up, you can take your finger. Just kind of smooth it up just a little bit, not a whole lot. Pretty much it. We'll get the corner. Beautiful, love it. Wanna look good? You know what they say? <laughs> nice cock. <laughs> I just play. But for real, I do have some t-shirts for sale that say nice cock. Cocking coming out of a caulking gun with a WKD construction logo on there and a got a coach on the front. So check out my store tab if you would like one of those. All right, y'all, that's it. That was my video on setting tile at the Melton Farm project. We are getting very close to finishing the inside. We got to do the fireplace. We have to set the cabinets, the backsplash. And I think that is, I think that's pretty, pretty much it there, Bill. So we are nearing the completion to the Melton Farm project. And then we will be jumping to my house, the Dykes Home project. So that, that's very exciting. And uh, I got a lot, a lot of good content on, on my house. But once again, I am Keith Dykes. This was the Melton Farm project. Thanks for watching. And as always, Got it, coach. You guys have, you guys have a wonderful day.